trading day. This part of the bulletin, we've uh, firmly fixed our focus on small business. And the family business sector really has experienced quite dramatic changes since the GFC. Manufacturing, uh, for one, has really uh, is really bearing the brunt of some of the changes. The latest RMIT NGI survey shows only 20% of family businesses are now in manufacturing, and that's halved over the last decade. Uh, there's uh, plenty more interesting findings in this, so let's go to Grant Phil, the director of MGI South Queensland. Um, Grant, great to have you on the show. Thank you very much. But firstly, set the, set the scene for us and this the survey that you've done and, and the, the history of the survey, I suppose, just to get an idea of the kind of findings you're coming up with. Yes, thanks, Brooke. Uh, look, this um, survey uh, extends, has extended over approximately 20 years. This is the eighth survey in a series. Uh, MGI has been associated with it for the last 10 years. So what we've been able to do is get a longitudinal view. Uh, we believe it's the longest running loop, longitudinal view of family business uh, over that period of time. And is the end, I see that you're trying to measure things like concerns, issues, aspirations, so more so um, confidence and motivations and those kinds of factors as opposed to actual conditions being experienced? Uh, it's a bit, of, a bit of both, Brooke, yes, but it's, it is more around the concerns, aspirations and issues that are facing uh, family and private business in Australia. For how long has this survey showed that, that family business is surviving and not necessarily thriving, which seems to be one of the takeaways from, from this survey? Yeah, um, yes, Brooke, the, uh, this survey is uh, run every three years, so certainly since the last survey in 2010, uh, that seems to be a growing ten trend that family and private businesses are doing it tough, uh, and as you said, surviving, uh, not thriving, certainly and, in the manufacturing, sorry. And so you wouldn't have said that in 2010? I'm just wondering, has the last three years seen very major change when you look at the, the results of this survey going back those years that you mentioned? So certainly the last two surveys, from 2006 mm -hmm. to 2013, we're seeing some significant changes, but um, when we look even further back over the last decade, uh, the trends are pretty alarming in some areas. Yeah, you were about to say manufacturing, and that, there does seem, seem some staggering figures on, on that a part of the economy. That's correct. I mean, we've seen the uh, survey respondents uh, in the manufacturing sector drop from around 40% uh, just 10 years ago, uh, down to 26%, down to 24%, and now it's down to 20%. So uh, there's, a, there's a steady decline there in manufacturing. Mm. I, I found quite concerning the read on the prospects for industry, where there were concerns about the financial availability of their businesses, so more than double basically, it was 58%, more than double that of 10 years ago, but concerns for the future prospects of their particular industry was almost triple the reading that you got from 2003. It kind of suggests a very grim picture that very few people feel like they, they, their entire industry is doing well. What do you think is behind that? Uh, I think that's right, Brooke. I think we've seen, uh, again, from 10 years ago, that was around 15% of respondents had a concern about their particular industry. Uh, and again, that's been something that's steadily increased up to 21% in 2006, uh, and then jumped somewhat in 2010 up to 38%, uh, and now again gone to 55%. So over one in two of every business uh, is concerned about the yeah. prospects for their industry. What is at the heart of that? What feeds um, that, that idea about their industries? I, su I suspect uh, it's a confidence factor that they, uh, they just can't see any light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, and certainly in the family and private business uh, space where MGI is involved, um, we're seeing a lot of uh, duplication of regulation that uh, business are talking to us about uh, and different impediments both at federal and state level. Mm. Yeah, um, things like red tape, uh, complexity of tax laws, um, there's a perception that government is not doing enough to help. Um, it's funny because small business and, and family business by its very nature is so resilient um, and, you know, in, in many ways tries not to, to rely on anyone else. They go into family business because they rely on themselves. Um, how are you seeing them inwardly looking at and reflecting what's going on and, and trying to, I guess, look for a more optimistic outlook than they currently seem to have? Yeah, look, I, I think a lot of the family businesses, as we've seen, particularly in the, in the manufacturing sector, have been affected by the high Aussie dollar. Yeah. Uh, we've certainly also seen the impact of, uh, of China uh, on, uh, on that replacement of imports. So uh, they're two big areas. I think also the, uh, in the family business space, 
they're seeing an increase, increase in complexity uh, and overburden of legislation uh, that just complicates life significantly uh, for family and private business. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us on the program tonight. It's great to have you on board. We appreciate it. Thanks, Brooke. Thank you. So that's the survey. So as, as you said, we, we see that survey every couple of years, so it does give us a bit of a read on the trends when it comes to just um, concerns, issues, aspirations of family and also private businesses, and particularly the sentiment across time.